the church today. Uh, thank you to our guest organist or sub-organist today, not really a guest, but Susan Williams, longtime member of our church, is filling in for Hank today at the organ. Um, it's, it's great to be here together, to worship together uh, this morning. Uh, when you came in, hopefully you grabbed a worship guide so you can see all of the things that are coming up around church and encourage you uh, to read that uh, at some point, take it with you. And then inside there is a connection card and please fill that out. Let us know if you have prayer concerns that you would like us to forward to our prayer team or our pastors or any questions that you may have. Will you stand and say hello to those around you? In just a moment, we'll sing our opening hymn. Come, Christians join to sing. It's number 158 in your hymnals. What a great day it is to be here in God's house. Um, I, I just want to just kind of point out that the referees played a great game yesterday and all the catches that they made. Um, we're here today just to, to take a breath and to be excited that we're here on Sunday morning. I, I, I thought about getting like Snicker ice cream bars and just passing them out to you this morning just to lift your spirits a little bit, but they were melting on the way in, so we decided to hold on to those. Today is an incredible day um, to be in here in God's house and to remember that God is moving and working in us and all of the things that we do. Um, we've got three major things coming up because it's the fall. Have you noticed that it's the fall outside? Um, we're very thankful that it's not 108 degrees outside. Um, and, and as we celebrate this incredible season for the next five days until it gets hot again, uh, we celebrate um, all that God's going to do in the midst of this fall. Um, and so this week, or in, the, in this month, we've got three major events that are happening. Our, our mother-son event um, is coming up. Uh, if you've got a, a son or a grandson, and you're a mom or a grandmother in this congregation or just in the community, um, we'd love to invite you to that. Miss Gwen is putting on an incredible, um, incredible event for you, so make sure you put that on your calendars. Um, we also have our, our good neighbor, David. 
that's coming up. And Good Neighbor Day is one of the important parts of our church um, that reminds us about what it means to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And, and there's so many different things that happen on that day. So I, when, sometimes when we do mission work in the church, a long time ago we had these very specific events but, but we started to ask the question, what happens if we create a place for all different walks of life to come and participate in a way to serve? And so Good Neighbor Day is the great um, combination of so many different service projects all in one day. And you can be three years old and serve, and you can be 95 years old and serve. There's all different ways for you to give of yourself and to give of your heart. So, so many things to be thankful for. Make sure you check out um, all the different ways on our website and there in the bulletin on, on how to get plugged into Good Neighbor Day. Um, also, we have our fall festival coming up, and that's on October 29th. Um, fall festival is this incredible, um, incredible neighborhood celebration where people from all around the church come and celebrate. There will be lots of candy, lots of sugar. We do a, a trunk or treat on the back parking lot um, to make sure that everybody can make your circles and all the kids can dress up. Um, they're giving away full cakes that Brian gets really excited about. There's all kinds of things um, that happen on Fall Festival. So all three of those events happen this month, and I want to make sure that you have got those in your calendar that we can celebrate not just what it is to be a community on Sunday morning, but what it means to be a community um, in this very place that we live as we reach our hands out and our hearts out to the people that we come in contact with all the time. Friends, this morning we start this worship service knowing that God is present in this room. And as God is present with us today and as we move into a time of prayer, let's be aware that God is moving, God is working, and God is shaping us in our life. Let's prepare a time for a time of prayer. Good morning. Won't you bow your heads with me? Lord, we come before you as worried, grateful, distracted, joyful, busy children. You know what we need even before we do. You know what we seek before we even say a word. Spirit of the Lord, rest upon us. Quiet our minds in this moment as we sit in the silence of your sanctuary. Open our hearts to your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your unconditional love. Help us to remove the blinders from our eyes that prevent us from seeing truth and love. Remove the blinders so we may see your reflection in not just ourselves, but all who you created in your image and likeness. In this time of prayer, we ask you to protect and strengthen our first responders and those in our military. We are so grateful for them and for the leaders in our governments, our churches, our schools. Thank you for the ways you have gifted them. Wrap your arms around these men and women to show them love, strength, and encouragement. Provide them with the knowledge needed to approach each situation and help them to see your hand in the work they do. Father, we ask this also for ourselves. We confess that too often we allow ourselves to be controlled by our opinions and our desires, our agendas and our impulses rather than by you, Holy Spirit. Please forgive us and help us to draw closer to you. And when we fall short, remind us to turn our face to you and not away. Grant peace to your children who are hungry, poor, and afraid, and show us how to help. And together we lift up our voices and pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
At this time, I would love to invite the children forward for a children's moment to so come down and join me on the steps. Well, that's awesome. I have a question. Have you ever had a tree be chopped down in your backyard? Has that ever happened? Not yet? No? Well, it happened at my house recently, and it made me very sad because I loved this tree. It gave me shade, and it just made me happy. And when you cut down a tree, what's left? The stump. The stump. Exactly. Do you think something is going to grow out of that stump? No. Is there going to be a new tree come out of that stump? Maybe. Probably not. It would, it would be very unexpected, and it would be kind of a miracle if that happened, wouldn't it, right? Well, before Jesus came, people waited a long, long, long time for him. Hundreds and hundreds of years. And when he came, Jesus came unexpectedly. Do you remember? He came from a young girl who was not married yet, and he was born where? Where was he born? In a, garden? in a barn full of animals. And it was a quiet, calm night. And nobody expected that. And it was a miracle when Jesus came. And in our scripture, it talks about a stump, kind of like the one in my backyard. And it says that there's going to be a branch that grows from this stump. And that was a picture to show us that Jesus was going to come and bring new life just like a branch coming out of a stump. And it was going to be unexpected, but it was going to be amazing. And it was going to be a miracle. And when Jesus came, he gave all those people that were sad and confused for a long, long time, he gave them love and joy and peace. And today, Jesus gives us all those things. And sometimes it's unexpected right? We get joy from sad circumstances, or we find healing, or love, and joy, and all those things, and it comes unexpectedly. Jesus today still gives us these wonderful things, right? And so, actually, on this stained glass window over here, there's a picture of that stump, and it shows a vine growing out, and it's the picture that shows us that Jesus was going to come from the family of Jesse to be the king of the world, and we are so grateful for that, aren't we? Yes. All right. Can you pray with me? Pray your hands and pray your eyes. Ready? Dear God, thank you for all the ways that you show up in our lives and bring new life. We love you. Amen. Good job. It's for my microphone. We'll sing together now a hymn of response. Will you stand as you are able? We'll sing together number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. remain standing for our scripture. Good morning. The scripture reading for today 
is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our anthem this morning is called Gracious Spirit Dwell With Me, and it's set to a a beautiful tune that you uh, may find uh, familiar by a composer named Kaylee Scott. Kaylee Scott is from uh, Alabama, an American composer, and uh, the reason I want to tell you about him is because he's he's written such a, a large output for church music and uh, as a composer who's still living, uh, it's pretty exceptional to have your your hymns uh, chosen for many, many hymnals. And so this wonderful composer, Kaylee Scott, wrote this anthem, Gracious Spirit, Dwell With Me.
we let the gracious spirit of God wash over us this morning, I, I wonder, I wonder what God will do in the midst of this place. I, John read for us this morning this is an incredible story, a story about how God is a part of a continually, continually evolving movement of how the world and God work together. And, and this week, as we celebrate this, I mean, we celebrate the root of Jesse, I, I just want to point out to you that it's actually found its way into the story um, right at the bottom of our Christmas window. And it's that important to us about where this story comes from and where it starts and where it continues to go. Now, you and I are a part of stories all the time, right? Stories about things that start someplace and they end somewhere else. And so this isn't a new thing for us. In fact, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing that happens before our eyes as life unfolds before us. For instance, if I believed that something could be jinxed, then I would tell you that yesterday in the public service announcement that started at Kyle Field before the game, and it said, please don't rush the field, right? In anticipation for us to beat Alabama, right? Don't say that out loud before we get to the end of the game, right? Send the public service announcement up in the fourth quarter during one of the timeouts. Because the reality is, is that I don't really believe you could be jinxed, but if I did, that would be it, right? Let's not talk about winning before we win, amen? But it's funny because I started to think about the public service announcements over my lifetime as a fight in Texas Aggie. I, the first public service announcement, and this has been a problem for years, I, the, either it's the Southwest Conference or the Big 12 or even the SEC now, nobody wants students to actually rush the field. It's a thing. And, and when I was a student, the way that they deterred this was is they, they had some of the, the, the seniors from the Calvary during the Corps, and it was a great deterrent. They stood on the field with their hand on their swords, right? This is a, this is a very effective way to do this. Um, don't come onto the field. I'm armed, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a thing. I, the funny thing about that is, though, is, is that I, maybe if they ever actually drew their sword, that might be like a problem on national news, right? It might not be a good, that might not be the image we want. So we moved. We moved to employed security guards, right? Do you remember this? I mean, this hasn't been that long ago. Employed security guards standing at each hash mark, making sure that nobody ran onto the field at the end of the game. And then a couple of years ago, there was this thing called a fine. Did you see this? Right, and, and the fine happens right when we beat Alabama a couple of years ago, and we all rushed the field, and, and that fine just went into a scholarship fund. Well, now they've ex made it really exciting for us. We're helping students by running onto the field. This is, it's not really that effective at the end of the day, right? But did you see this public service announcement yesterday? Most effective that I've seen in, in 20 years. Public service announcement said this, this is the rule that's changed. Now A&M will pay a fine that's about as much as my first house that I bought, and it will go to the opposing team if you rush the field. These guys are geniuses, right? I mean, this is great. We have finally found an effective deterrent. I do not want Alabama getting my first house in, in, a, in a gift, in a thing, right? So, and, and here we are. We're watching the story progress. I wonder, imagine what it's like for God to look not just at your life and at mine, but look at all the lives of the generations before us. And God, who can see all the generations that are beyond us. I wonder what it's like for God to see this story progress through you and for me. Because the little window at the bottom of the Christmas window, it reminds us of this great big God that's been working for a really long time for the best possible outcome for our life, for the best solutions, for the best decisions, for the best chances that you and I have to live in this good thing called God's creation that we get to live in every single day. As we're coming home from the game last night and you look up into the sky, and despite the loss, this beautiful sunset is happening over College Station, we're reminded this isn't just a story of athletics. This is a story of God. God who's continuing to make things beautiful and better in the midst of your life and in mine. And, and I wonder today, I mean, we've got a little bit more of the sermon to give, but I wonder today if we just have that moment, just that thought, 
here at the beginning of the root of Jesse. I wonder, what good things will God continue to do in your life? Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we're so thankful today for the hope that we have, for, for the sunsets, God, that are in our life, for, for the new beginnings and for the new shoots, the new things that are happening in our life. And we pray this morning, God, that in all of the good things that you're doing in us, in all the ways you keep improving us, God, in all the ways you keep pushing us, I wonder, God, today what we need to listen to, what we need to hear, what we need to find in our life, God, that reminds us we're not doing this alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A good friend of mine started a project when he was um, early in the 20s of his life, started a project with his dad to rebuild an old Ford truck. And this thing his dad found on the, on the side of some junkyard somewhere, he saw the, the, the diamond in the rough per se. And in this rusting hulk of a, of a machine that really couldn't go anywhere, they put it on the back of a flatbed trailer and they brought it home and they started to replace the interiors and the exteriors of this truck, bolt by bolt. And I mean, everything needed to be redone. They brought the truck in and they put it in the garage. And it was one of those moments where his mom was always mad because one of the two spots in her garage was already always taken by something that never, ever moved, right? Um, I know there are some of you out there that have a fully functioning garage where you can pull both cars in. Most of us have problems with that, right? But here they were. A whole bay was taken up. And in that bay, they, for, for months, for years, as long as I knew it, they're always out there on Saturday afternoon tinkering with the truck and one day they got the truck to actually turn over and to start they had enough of the engine rebuilt enough of the pieces that they, they could actually get it rolling and they even took it for a little spin around the block but it wasn't done it still needed a paint job it still needed some interior pieces fixed it still needed that but but that started a, another whole journey of when he and his dad got in the truck and his dad put his hands on the wheel and they started to drive all around and then his dad passed away and my friend is still tinkering with the truck it's this experience of the past that moves them to get underneath the hood and start to fix the things that are still wrong with it. But it's always also the future as he thinks about what will be like for him to work with his children on this truck. It's the story of the root of Jesse. It's the story about how God started 3,000 years ago with a, 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 just a family, a humble shepherding family. A humble shepherding family in this town called the House of Bread, Bethlehem, Bethlehem as you know it. And there at the edge of the town, a, a humble shepherd with eight sons gets a visit from this wiry prophet, from this man named Samuel, who comes calling at the house. And Samuel says to Jesse, hey, this thing you've been working on with your kids this life of raising the sheep and, and just hacking out a living out of, the, out of the very hard ground here that is Israel, I, something good's going to happen. God's going to do something big through your youngest and unite all of Israel together. Huh. And as God stepped into that moment in this humble shepherd's life, you wonder, what happens next? Because God's a part of the story now. God's underneath the hood with Jesse. God's changing out bolts and changing out screws and he's doing all of the things that he needs to do to help the car run better. What happens now? And the Bible starts to unfold. Not just in one lifetime, but generation after generation after generation. The Bible keeps going. All because God stepped into this humble shepherd's life and did something big. God had a plan to build something. God had a plan to change some parts out. God had a plan to get involved. 
a couple years ago, one of our students um, at the church came by to, to just to talk to us a little bit about how to build a resume. It was a great, uh, great think tank process for us, right? As we, um, as many of us on staff have had to build resumes before. Um, it was really cool to be invited into that process. And, and we watched this young woman who's very accomplished start to build the progression of all the things that had happened in her life to bring her to that moment. And it started with all A's in high school. It started with a whole list of activities um, that she had been a part of. It started with all of the service projects she had been a part of. It, it started with her being instrumental in leading a mission trip with her, with her church to a, a third world country. I mean, when you started to build all the good things that this young lady had done in her life, it was incredible. And when we got done putting all of the highlights of everything that had gone right for her on a piece of paper, you look at it and you say, huh, there's no way you're not going to get hired. <laughs> no way that you've done all of this and you're not going to hit it out of the park and get a job maybe at the place of your choice, right? But you know, as we sat there and talked about it, she kind of laughed and she said, you know, this is just part of my life. This is just the good things in my life. There's so much more that's happened to me than that's just on this piece of paper. You know, one of my favorite things about the Bible is that when the Bible builds the resumes of people's lives, such as David, it talks about all the incredible things David has done. But you know what it also reports on? The things that didn't go well. The things that didn't work. It's, I think it's one of the most powerful things about us opening up the scripture passage and being able to see that it doesn't always go the way we think it's going to go. And in fact, sometimes we jump into the story and we have an incredible capacity to mess it up a little bit. Have you noticed that? And if we're going to build a real resume of our life as we applied for a job and we had to put down all of our failures along with our successes, I wonder what that would look like. Aren't you glad you're not David being recorded in history in First and Second Samuel for all of the really good things you did? That'd be awesome for people to remember that for thousands of years. But if you're going to be in the Bible, you're also going to be remembered for all the idiot things you did too. And I wonder what that looks like. For us to write down not just part of our life, but all of it. And all of a sudden, in, 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 in this incredible passage in Isaiah, this prophecy, this invitation to look not just at the good and the bad of your life, it invites us to look at something else too. That in those moments where the tree gets completely cut down, in those moments where David falls straight to his knees, because he knows he can't go any further on his own. In those moments, someone else is a part of his resume too. God the creator steps in and sends a shoot out of the stump, out of what is rotting, out of what is crumbling, out of what is falling into history and going back into the forest floor. Out of that stump, God does something miraculous and sends a shoot up, a whole new branch of life. A branch of life that ironically fits right into what Zach preached about last week. A life-giving vine comes up out of the ground and starts something new. You know, it's interesting that when the Bible speaks of the shoot, it's not David's shoot. It's not David's shoot. Why is it that we're not talking about Jesus, who, who is the child right here in the window that comes out of the line of David, out of the line of kings? Why is it not David's shoot that comes out of the stump and it's Jesse's instead? You know, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, did you see this week that Michael Jordan was the, one of the very first athletes to make the Forbes 400 list. Did you see that? Um, who's now worth a, a net total of $3 billion, has done all of these incredible things. I, you know, I, we, I looked up this week, though, um, the name of his father, James R. Jordan, 
And James R. Jordan was also an incredible Air Force pilot, um, a textile worker, did all kinds of good things. And by the way, he raised one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived. That might go on the resume, right? One of the good things that I did with my life. And yet, that's the story we're telling this morning. That the root of a great empire started with James R. Jordan and not Michael Jordan. It leaves this room in the story not to speak about just the good things and the bad things on David's resume. It leaves this room in the story about how God had a plan way before David ever came into an existence. And his name was Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Ruth and Boaz. Jesse, who was just a humble shepherd. And yet God stepped into Jesse's house via Samuel and said, I'm going to do something big in your life. See, all of a sudden now, in a world where it seems like I'm supposed to build my life solely on my successes, is that what we're supposed to do? To build our resume, to build our life, to build our future obituary only on our successes? Is that our job? Or does the Bible invite us to do something more, something bigger, something better than that? See, the root of Jesse in this story, it reminds us that, yes, I have action in the good things that I do, and I take responsibility for the bad things that I've done, and yet there's another story, too, the story where God steps in and does work in my life as well. When God steps into the the very root of who Jesse was and says, Jesse, through you, I'm going to change the world in the generations to come. You, the humble shepherd, get to be a part of this story. And and I wonder for you and for me, when God steps into the humility of your life and in mine, I wonder, do we leave room on that piece of paper about what our life is? about all the times that God steps in and picks us up off the floor and says, I'm doing something too. When I went to visit my friend not too long ago, the garage that his father had had been sold after he passed away. But my friend had taken the truck and he had driven it to his garage and much to his wife's excitement, parked that truck in that garage. And now she lost a whole bay of her life in one of the spots that she could have parked her car. And he's still changing bolts on the truck today. And he's gotten a whole new paint job on it. He's, he's continuing to make it look better. He's continuing to fix what's broken. He's continuing to help enhance what's already good. But there's one thing I asked him. I said, is it all redone at this point? I mean, after 20 years of redoing this truck, is it all redone? Is there any original part that's left? He said, yeah, there's one thing. We got into the truck and we sat down. and He said, this steering wheel is still the original And it's the same steering wheel, he said, that my father used when we took that first trip around the block together. And he put his hand on the 11 mark, and he put his hand here on the 5 o'clock mark. And he said, I can still put my hands where my father put his. You know, the thing is, is as much as the world has changed, As much as we've gone from the sabers of the core to the the new public service announcements (laughs) inviting us to give a gift to our opposing team, as much as the world has changed in the fact that cars can drive themselves now, evidently we don't even have to put our hands on the steering wheel, as much as shifted in our life, you know, there's one thing that's still original. That God has his hands on the steering wheel of our life. 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And God hasn't let go. 
And as easy as it is for us to sit down and, and put out a whole list of the successful things that you and I have done in our life, of the checklist of all the things that we've done right, and, and maybe if we're even real and honest with ourselves, maybe we put on the other side too, the checklist of the things that we have done wrong, the things that we need to get better at. Maybe that's a full picture, but is it really a full picture at all? Unless we make the whole other column. The column of the fact that God still has his hands on our life. You can grab the steering wheel where the Lord still is, moving us down the road. And in the root of Jesse, we're reminded God's still moving. Thousands of years ago, God stepped into a humble shepherd's life and said, Hey, you're going to do some good things and you're going to do some bad things, but I'm going to do some work as well. In the windows, you'll notice that at the top right, um, we have the words from the Bible that we feel help empower each window and lift up the word of God every time we walk into this place. But underneath each of those words, you'll find a vine. A beautiful golden vine that the fosters have, have beautifully painted in there. And as Scott paints that work, and as we get all that vine just right, it reminds us that, well, that grows from somewhere. It grows all the way back from the root of the Jesse tree. And it keeps growing, and it keeps moving, and it keeps driving us in our life all the way around us, and all the way through us, and all the way with us as we go further into God's great future. There's one part in the truck that's still there. The place where God puts his hands and hasn't ever let go. Let's pray together. Gracious God, as we build our life, as we live it, God, to the fullest that we can and all the good and the bad that we do, God, I pray this morning that we leave a room, a full column, God, for your work too. That we never get to a point, God, in our life where we forget that you have a plan that is sometimes in step with ours, sometimes working against our ridiculous thoughts, and all the time, God, doing something bigger through us than we could ever know for ourselves. God, we pray this morning that as we continue to grow from the stumps of our failures, God, that you remind us of the life that you keep breathing in us and through us. From the root of Jesse to his son David and through his descendant, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are grafted into the branch that springs from the root of Jesse. Not only do we get to share together in the grace and the glory of God, but we share a common call, a call that God started thousands of years ago to be poured out for the sake of others. As our ushers come forward, I invite you to consider how you will live into this call. Today, our dollar offering will go toward Good Neighbor Day, a day that is dedicated to our church pouring itself out for the sake of our neighbors. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for grafting us into your family, for giving us the grace to respond to the needs of our world. Bless these gifts of our efforts. Be with us that your love may flow freely through our generosity. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. We'll sing together uh, the hymn, Be Thou My Vision, while the offering plates are being passed. <laughs>
reflexology, please. continue to stand as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Church, the same God that brings life through a stump Growth through our failures is the same God that calls us into community because we cannot do this alone. And so today or this morning, if you're looking for a community to plug into, I would invite you to come down to join a conversation with our pastors. Find Michael Ellis in the Welcome Centers or reach out to us sometime this week. We would love to walk with you in this journey. Amen. It's Time for our invitational hymn. We'll sing together number 571, Go Make of All Disciples.
You know, one of the great things about the Bible is how it speaks truth. And if John had kept reading today, you would have found this familiar verse past um, the first three verses where the lions lay down with the lamb, right? We find this on Christian radio all the time. Did you know it keeps going and it says that the cows will lay down with the bear? And I just thought to myself as I was reading that this week, well, God, you better come back and fix that now because the Longhorns and the and Baylor Bears are not going to be in the same conference next year. So, I mean, we're going to have to get all this done before, before TU comes to the, to the SEC. So today, as we celebrate all that God is doing in our life, we can celebrate the story that keeps happening, keeps unfurling before our eyes. My question to you is, though, do we make enough room for God's work to be a part of that story? For the fact that God's been working not just for thousands of years, but God that's working in your life right now to do the things you see, to do the things you can't, and to know that as you walk outside of these doors, that in all the good and the bad that you're going to do in this week, God's going to do a good work in your life too. I wonder what you will find that to be. Amen? We'll join together in singing our benediction now. Please join.